Good morning, everybody. Can I get my singing crew up here? Go ahead and get settled in. In your cars or your chairs. Get nice and comfy. This mask has a dual purpose. I feel much warmer. <laughs> but I'm going to lower it so I can sing. Do I? Do 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 all seriousness, good morning, everybody. That's why they don't let me start. <laughs> good morning. It's good to see everybody here. As we get settled in, we're going to go ahead and sing a song, and then we'll carry on with our worship, all right? Let us sing. Thank you, Lord, for loving me, and thank you, Lord, for blessing me. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole and saving my soul. I want to thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Let us all with one accord sing praises to Christ the Lord. Let us all unite in song to praise Him all day long. I want to thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Please reveal your will for me so I can serve you for eternity. Use my life in every way. Take hold of it today. I want to thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I want to thank you, Lord. Loving me, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Amen. Be seated. Good morning, church. I am very glad you're joining with us today, whether you're outside here with us on this brisk morning or you're participating from home. Uh, welcome to the worship service of the family. Got a few pieces of family business that uh, we want to address before we go any farther. As you probably already heard, we are helping out about 56 kids uh, by providing them a Christmas uh, this year. And these are kids that otherwise would not have an opportunity to have Christmas if we would not do that. Uh, you guys are doing great. I mean, right now we have only about six kids left. So if you have an interest in helping out, or maybe you haven't been able to get a kid yet, uh, please see Sharon or Adriana or contact them and let them know that you'd like to participate in this. And this isn't even anything that you would necessarily have to go out shopping. If you would like to uh, maybe just donate some money, uh, we're trying to target somewhere between $25 and $50 per kid. Uh, if you'd like to donate some money, contact them as well. Uh, we also have our next Zoom group, group class will be starting this Thursday, December 3rd, uh, and running through December 17th, and that'll be a three-week class. Dustin will, do, Dustin will be leading that discussion on biblical, biblical community in a pandemic titled Together Apart. If you'd like to participate in that class, uh, please contact Dustin. Uh, just a reminder today, I will be leading our closing prayer. Uh, if you uh, have a prayer request, uh, either text me uh, at uh, 330 316 2411. If you're here, you can come over and uh, let me know, and uh, we'll make sure that we include that in the prayer request. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention this morning is that um, we have. Let me, let me step back. 
when we started out with COVID, uh, one of the concerns was that financially the the church would take a hit because we weren't weren't together. Okay, and you guys did admirably in this process. Over the first several months, we were hitting our budget and and we did not have a problem. Now, as as this pandemic has has worn on. I think people are getting tired and maybe we're, we're not thinking about it as much. The last few months, we have not hit our budget from a, a contribution standpoint. So I just wanted to remind everyone that there is still a need here. And I think we still have a responsibility as part of this family to give. So I just wanted to remind you that there are several ways that you are able to give uh, you can either, if you're here at the church building on our Sunday morning, you can drop it in the wooden box as you go by. Uh, you can mail it to my house at uh, 9625 McCallum Avenue. Uh, you can mail it to the church building here at 9371 McCallum Avenue. If you don't feel safe with the mail, you have a couple ways. You can either drop it by my house uh, and, and give it that way. Or also, we have this online platform that if you go to our website, uh, AllianceCFC.com, that's AllianceCFC.com, navigate to the link Give, you can give online as well. So want to make sure that we're, we're doing that. Um, the scripture that I chose this morning is found in Psalms 9. And we are, we are coming off of time of... Thanksgiving, and uh, we are reminded, you know, on that one day of year to think about how many things that we have and that what we should be grateful for. Well, Katrina Meyer has a quote that says, Thanksgiving isn't just a day, it's a way we can live our lives every day. And I really believe that's truthful when it comes to, to being Christians. In Psalms 9, um, we see a, a Psalm of David after he lost one of his sons. And it says this, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High God. So church, no matter what goes on in this life, we have a reason to be thankful. And we have a reason to be joyful. So my encouragement to you as you go into this next week is that you would be thankful and that you would be joyful and that the world would see Christ in you. Let's go to God in prayer. Holy Father, as we come before you this morning, we are grateful for the opportunity that we have to be together as a family. Father, whether we're, we're gathered here in the parking lot or uh, we're participating online, Father, we, we just praise you and lift you up where you need to be. Father, we pray that you'd be with us this morning as we uh, sing your praises and uh, just uh, worship you. Father, we're thankful for the family of believers that, that meets here together and that meets online. And we just pray, Father, that in our lives this week that we might be able to show those around us the joy of being a child of yours. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. All right, I got kids' songs. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to have a melody with the kids' songs. That's pretty exciting. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. Potato chip, potato chip, crunchy, crunchy. I love Jesus a bunchy, bunchy. Potato chip, potato chip, crunchy, crunchy. I love Jesus a bunchy, bunchy. There once was a woman... Walk like this. But then she met Jesus. And now she walks like this. Woo! Potato chip, potato chip, crunchy, crunchy. I love Jesus a bunchy, bunchy. Potato chip, potato chip, crunchy, crunchy. I love Jesus a bunchy, bunchy. There once was a man. 
who walked like this. But then he met Jesus. And now he walks like this. Whoa, potato chip, potato chip, crunchy, crunchy. I love Jesus a bunchy, bunchy. Potato chip, potato chip, crunchy, crunchy. I love Jesus a bunchy, bunchy. Hey, Jace. Did you know I have a dog? And uh, growing up, my dog Linus, you know, sometimes he'd get sick. And when he gets sick, sick, he'd start to whimper. And, you know, he's a dog that grew up on the farm. And so there's one thing on the farm you like a little bit more than potato chips, and that's tater tots. And so the Lord blessed us with this song. Tater tot, tater tot, munchy, munchy. I love Jesus a bunchy, bunchy. Tater tot, tater tot, bunchy, munchy. I love Jesus a bunchy, bunchy. There once was a doggy. There once was a doggy. Who went? Who went? But then he met Jesus. Then he met Jesus. And now he walks like this. Woo! Tater tot, tater tot, munchy, munchy. I love Jesus a bunchy, bunchy. Tater tot, tater tot, munchy, munchy. I love Jesus a bunchy, bunchy. Wow, I, something popped in my back. <laughs> oh, there was, wasn't there? Okay. <laughs> Down by the river. Down by the river. I took a little walk. Met up with the devil. Met up with the devil. Had a, Had a little talk. I pushed him in the river. And hung him up to dry. We can beat the devil. Any old time. All right. Girl version or boy version first, church? You guys don't get near excited as the kids do in youth worship, I tell you that. <laughs> All right, everybody, get out your purses. Okay. Down by the river, Down by the river. I, took I took a little walk. Met up with the devil, with the devil. Had, a had a little talk. And I pushed him in the river. And I slapped him with my purse. We can beat the devil. Any old time. I can't help but think about this is live on Facebook. Oh gosh. I hope I hope none of my friends are watching. All right. All right. Now the man version. Down by the river. I took a little walk. Met up with the devil. Had a little talk. And I pushed him in the river. And I jacked him in the jaw. We can beat the devil. Any old time. There really was something on that because of the condensation. Down by the river, took a little walk, met up with the devil, had a little talk, push him in the river, hung him out the drive. We can beat the devil any old time. Say, we can beat the devil any old time. All right, church, let's sing. Oh, my. I have a voice left. <laughs> restore my spirit, Lord, I need restored. My heart is weary, please help me, dear Lord. I stand in need of more strength from your word. Renew my love, rebuild my faith, oh, restore my soul. Revive the fire, Lord, deep in my soul. Stir my desire to work in your fold. Light in my heart, dear God, you're still grown cold. 
Lord, renew my love, rebuild my faith, oh, restore my soul. Renew my courage, Lord, it needs restored. My cup is empty, refill it, dear Lord. Replace all doubts and fears with faith so bold. Renew my love, rebuild my faith, oh, restore my soul. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. And he will lift you up. And he will lift you up. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was blind, but now I see. So humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. And He It's going to be a song for our lesson here. The splendor of a king, the in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great how great is our God and age to age he stands and time is in his hands beginning and the end beginning and the end the Godhead three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God, how great is our God, sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God.
Good morning, church. You guys are pretty far away, so I'll give you grace. Good morning, church. Oh, sweet. Honks. Uh, I still can't hear you guys at home. You're going to have to speak up. It was a joke. Okay, so I want to say a prayer as we kind of prepare for this lesson here. Um, and then we're going to dive in. So let's bow. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we love you. God, you are so good. And God, on cold mornings like this where my ears are freezing and my fingertips are freezing, uh, you've blessed me with wool socks so that at least my toes can stay warm. <laughs> um, God, I'm so thankful for this opportunity that we have as your children, whether we are here or whether we are at home or wherever we find ourselves this morning. Uh, God, that we can all gather as your children and lift you up. God, give you the praise and honor and glory that are due to you because you are a good God. God, as we launch into the lesson for today and um, we talk about the season that we're about to head into, God, I pray that you would move me out of the way. God, that you would fill me with your spirit. God, that your spirit would fill the hearts and the minds and the ears of those that are listening this morning. God, that we may not just hear this message and, and then leave it, but God, that it would penetrate our hearts. God, that we would find encouragement and that we would find hope because of the words of scripture this morning. Again, Father, I love you so much. I thank you for Jesus, God, as we head into this season the Christmas season, God, I pray that though there's so many other things for us to focus on, God, there's there's family time, there's presents, there's, um, there's a lot for us to think about in this season. God, I pray that we do not lose sight of the reason why we celebrate this season, and that's Jesus. God, we're thankful that you sent him to us. God, we're thankful that he died. We're thankful that he defeated death so that we might have hope. Hope of a life that starts with you now and lasts forever. God, I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, this morning, um, and, and over the last several weeks, um, I was listening to some Christmas music. Um, Normally, I don't like to listen to Christmas music until after Thanksgiving, but we've had a rough year, right, church? And if I want to bump to some Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, I think this is the year above every other year that I can bump to Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer before Thanksgiving. Amen? Amen. Thank you. That's what this little thing is here for. It's for my glasses. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. That's not true. It's a zipper. Um... But there's a song that I mentioned last year as we were getting ready to launch into the Christmas season. And I, I, I preached a sermon series called A Thrill of Hope. And it's a lyric from the Christmas song, the classic Christmas hymn, Oh Holy Night. Have you guys heard this song? I'm imagining pretty much everybody's heard this song, yes? Okay. Um, the words go like this. Oh Holy Night, the stars were brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appears and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope. Does anyone know what the, the next words to that sentence are? Someone say it loud. The weary world rejoices. The weary world rejoices. For yonder brings or for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. So not only for this year, which we'll talk about, actually, no, let's talk about that first for this year. 
Do you think we would fall under the weary world category? I mean, we've talked about this week after week, right? Where we have a lot going on politically. We have a lot going on um, racially, socially. Uh, we have a global pandemic, which um, I never would have imagined I would have to go through in my life. I'm sure many of you are not thrilled that you have to go through it either. But we have this just crazy world that we're living in right now that I think if we were to really sit down and think about it, whether you lost a job or you got laid off for a little bit of time or furloughed or, or uh, your family took a financial hit somehow or you have loved ones who have COVID or have dealt with COVID or, or you're afraid of what might happen if they catch COVID Maybe isolation wasn't good to you. I know isolation wasn't good to me. Just think for a moment about all of the things that have happened this year. For you personally and for the world that we see around us. And ask yourself, would we fall under the weary world category? I think we would. There's so much going on. And, and, and I think it's also true if you look at the world in Jesus' time where you see a lot of things going on in the Old Testament. There's a lot of prophets that are talking about this coming Messiah. And I'm sure the people who were living in exile but then got to come home after exile, but then there's just a lot going on. And then in the 500, 400 years after the prophet Malachi comes, there's like, this massive four to five century long break where the people hear nothing from their God. They have these prophecies to hold on to where God has promised them that there's a Messiah coming. And in that time, the empire of Rome moves in and they take over. And the people of Israel feel weary. And it's at this time that we see God introduce a new part of the story. That, that that break, that silence was over. And we see in Luke, if you have a Bible, go to Luke chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 46 to 50 here. Or sorry, that's not true. That's next week. 26... We're going to start in verse 26, not, not 46. I'm sorry. Verse 26. The text reads this. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, greetings, O oh, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what, what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. So let me backtrack here. Okay? Let's look at all of the all of the stuff that's happened in the text up to this point. Okay? In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel, so God sends an angel named Gabriel, he's sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. So if you think about the word Messiah, it means anointed one, could also mean king, right? I'm imagining, and we see this throughout the Gospels, that the, the people of Israel are anticipating this king to come to set them free from their oppression, from the nation of Rome, from the empire of Rome, right? And God gets prepared to enact this plan out, not the way that the people of Israel would have seen it happening. And instead of sending an angel to somebody in the city of Jerusalem where you would expect to find a king, 
he sends an angel to a small region of Galilee to a very small town called Nazareth. A town so small that if you look in the Gospel of John in chapter 1, you see Nathaniel, one of the apostles of Jesus, ask the question, can anything good come from Nazareth? I, I, was, I mentioned this last year. I asked our teenagers a couple of years ago as we were talking about Nazareth. I said, you know, what would be the closest town here in this area to Nazareth? Like if you heard like, you know, somebody went pro in football or somebody went pro in basketball or there was some massive tech mogul that came out of some small town in northeastern Ohio near us. What would be our Nazareth? And they sat there and they thought for a moment, and if you live here, I'm, I'm so sorry. But they, they thought for a second, they nodded their heads, they looked around, and pretty much in unison, they just went, Beloit. Can anything good come from Beloit? Yeah. Praise Jesus. Patty came from Beloit. Amen. Amen. But in this scenario, we see the angel sent from God and he goes to Galilee. He goes to Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. So he goes to a small region, a small town, and finds a virgin teenage girl by the name of Mary. And, and the work that we're going to talk about within the next couple of weeks, the work that you know about, the saving work of Jesus Christ, the saving work of God, where God sends his son, is not to Jerusalem, is not to the throne It's to a small town. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. She's greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. I can almost imagine the angel looking at Mary and saying, Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. And she stands there for a moment and goes, You talking to me? I'm I'm this favored one that you're talking about here. She's greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, "Do not be afraid." Now, this is interesting to me. Um, I wonder if the the angel Gabriel took somewhat of a human like form here. Because when we, a couple weeks ago, talked about Isaiah being in the throne room of God, there were seraphim. They had six wings. can imagine, like, if the angels look like, you know, some of the angels that we see described in Scripture. They show up with six wings and, and maybe, like, eyes all over their bodies and, you know, stuff like that. And they're like, don't be afraid. Like, I would be terrified of that. I would be terrified if an angelic being showed up here anyway and was like, don't be afraid. I'd be like, nope, too late. I'm already afraid. Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I'm a virgin? And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. So why do I bring up this passage? 
as we talk about a weary world and, and trying to find a way to rejoice in a weary world. Like I said, church, we've been hit with a lot this year. Bless you. We've been hit with a lot this year. Some more than others, but this has been a tough year for a lot of people. And, and I think the definition of weary world falls upon us right now. And, and yet we enter into a season where we're going to be celebrating the coming of the greatest gift that we've ever received. And it started in quite possibly the most bleak of nations, the most bleak of situations, the most bleak of towns, the most bleak of regions, coming to a small virgin girl who had no idea that God would ever want to use her for anything. And as we hear in the song, a weary world is now going to have a reason to rejoice. And so church, as we launch into this season, I want to open this series up with an encouragement. Whatever year you've had, whatever struggles you've had, whatever has fallen upon you this, this year, with a global pandemic, whether it's financial trouble or health trouble or whatever, whatever it is. We're entering into a season where we can be reminded that there is a reason for us to have hope. And in that hope, we can rejoice for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. And so we fall on our knees we hear the angel voices as the song continues. Church, I, I hope, I hope that this is a season that even though we have so much surrounding us, even though there's so much to discourage us, even though there's so much to tear us down, make us feel worn, make us feel weary, we can celebrate that God sent Jesus. that God sent Jesus into the most weary of circumstances, into the most unusual circumstances. And from that church, you know the rest of the story. We're gonna talk about the rest of the story in the coming weeks. But from this moment, from this event, we see the life of a man who went to a cross for you and me. We see the life of a man who was buried in a tomb. We see the life of a man who came back from death so that you and I might have the hope that we sing about so that you and I might have the hope that we read about church this all happened in Nazareth in Galilee and if you felt like probably what these people felt like where and where is God in all of this may this season remind us that we have a reason to hope that God has not forgotten us, that actually God has done the work already to bring us closer to him. May we be reminded of our savior in this season, that even if you're weary, even if you're tired, even if you're worn, even if you're discouraged, may this season remind you that there is a reason to have hope. May you leave here bumping Christmas songs in your car, singing about a savior who has come. And may your heart find a little, a little bit of joy today and hopefully more joy as we approach that day. And then as Charlie mentioned earlier, not just on that day, not just in this season, but may we remember this story every day. May we remember our reality every day so that as we wake up in the morning and we're hit with all the junk that this world wants to throw at us, we can wipe it off and push it to the side because we are not a people who have that as our story. We are a people who have hope. Because some night in some remote region, some remote town, some random girl 
Although to us it would seem random, to God I'm sure it was very well planned. Our Savior came. And in that we can rejoice. Let's continue singing together, church. My only hope is you, Jesus, my only hope is you. From early in the morning till late at night, my only hope is you, and my only joy is you, Jesus. Jesus, my only joy is you. From early in the morning till late at night, my only joy is you. And my only peace is you. Jesus, my only peace is you. From early in the morning till late at night, my only peace is you. And all that I need is you, Jesus, all that I need is you. From early in the morning till late at night, all that I need is you. And my only hope is you, Jesus, my only hope is you. From early in the morning till late at night, my only hope is you. For all that you've done, I will thank you. For all that you're going to do. For all that you promised and all that you are is all that has carried me through. Jesus, I thank you. And I thank you, thank you, Lord. And I thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving and setting me free. Thank you for giving your life just for me. How I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. Gratefully thank you. Thank you. For all that you've done, I will thank you. For all that you're going to do. For all that you've promised and all that you are is all that has carried me through. Jesus, I thank you. And I thank you, thank you, Lord. And I thank you. loving and setting me free thank you for giving your life just for me how i thank you jesus i thank you gratefully thank you
Good morning, church. I want to thank everyone who's here physically this morning and everyone that's joining us online. If you have your Bibles, I want to encourage you to open them up to Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. I'll be starting in verse 22. Here's what Mark records. He says, And as they were eating, that's Jesus and his disciples, he took bread and after blessing and broke it and gave thanks and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup. And when he gave thanks, he gave it to them. And they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. We turn to this passage or passages like it throughout the Gospels or in 1 Corinthians often when it comes to this time in a ceremony in our worship. But what we often neglect or forget to emphasize is that this has a context. Jesus isn't implementing something um, drastically new. He's playing off of something that's very old. Back in verse 12 of the same chapter, Mark records this. He says, And on the first day of unleavened bread, that has a context, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb. Do you remember Passover back in Exodus chapter 12? The story of Israel, how they were caught up in slavery, how they faced challenge and pain and sorrow that God declared that this was my people, and so Moses boldly went before Pharaoh and said, let my people go, that classic line, that mic drop line. Nine plagues, and Pharaoh wouldn't relent, and then the tenth plague came. But before that tenth plague, God told Israel through Moses that Israel needed to do something. They needed to take a lamb. They needed to slay that lamb unblemished lamb, a year old lamb, take the blood and and put it over their doorposts. And that on that night, the destroyer would come and everyone who was covered by the blood of the lamb would be passed over. That their, their grievances, their sin, everything that they brought before this holy presence of a God that can't stand before sin, can't have sin before him would be passed over and that that God would relent on them and he would bring his destruction on, on Egypt. And so Israel did and Egypt didn't. And God's judgment came down and pain filled the land of Egypt and Israel was set free. Set free to make their journey to a promised land. That's the story of Israel and it's in that context that Jews throughout the centuries, they would gather together and they would celebrate the Passover, how God had set them free victoriously. How God took them on a path out of slavery and into freedom, taking them to the promised land. And it's on that night, in this context, that Mark records on the day when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, that our Passover lamb is about to be sacrificed. This isn't lost on New Testament Christians. This is something that they knew very well. Over and over again throughout the scriptures, we will find references to Jesus being the Lamb of God in John chapter 1. That he is the Passover lamb that Paul recognizes in 1 Corinthians 5. That he is the one who has set us free according to Hebrews chapter 9. He is the one that we find freedom in. And it's because of him that we are guaranteed to go to a promised land. And so we gather here in this moment, in this time, week after week, to celebrate something very old and yet very present and real to us. And that is our God has brought forgiveness and looked over our sins. He's 
washed us white as snow. And so we celebrate. We gather together as best as we can. And we remember what God has done, what God is doing. And in that, we find life. As Dustin said, hope is realized. So this morning, whether you're with us physically or on virtual, I want to encourage you to take this moment. If you're here, open up that plastic baggie. And let's follow the model that Jesus has said. Let's say a prayer for the bread. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace and your love. Father, you have given forgiveness to us. And, it, and it's, it's more than just the Passover lamb that uh, you've looked over our sin, that you've passed over our sin God, we have taken on the sanctity of your Lamb, Jesus, our Savior. And Father, in your eyes, we are pure. We have no blemish. Not because of our own righteousness, but because of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And God, in that we find life, in that we find hope, in that we find victory, in that we find joy. God, help us in this moment, wherever we are, to embrace the life that's found in Christ, to understand the true gospel. And, and God, may we demonstrate that gospel to the world. Thank you for the body that was hung on a tree for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Say a prayer for the vine. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, as I mentioned just a moment ago, it was the blood of the Lamb that, that marked out and delineated between your people Israel and the people of Egypt. And Father, it is only by the blood that uh, we are marked as different right now uh, Father may we live in light of the purity of that blood and Father we're thankful for the, the forgiveness that we find and uh, Father may it be a grace that not only has brought us to salvation but it is training us in righteousness and holiness and Father may your glory be seen to this earth because of our love and our forgiveness that we demonstrate to them God, it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Just one more note here. Separate and apart from communion, as Dad mentioned earlier, there's an opportunity to give, and I think it would be remiss of us not to acknowledge that in this moment, because on the heels of the Passover in Exodus chapter 12. You find in Exodus chapter 13, the consecration of the firstborn, to which God says that when Israel goes into the land of Canaan, after they receive what he has promised, that they are meant to set aside the first fruit, the firstborn. I think there's a principle there for us to follow as New Testament believers that out of the first fruits of what we earn, that we can give. N not, not begrudgingly, but because of what God has done for us. That we have found salvation, that salvation is ours. And in a demonstration of that, in appreciation of that, in thanksgiving of that, whatever we receive first goes to the Lord. Not even to taxes, but first to the Lord and then to anything else, then to our living. And so, as you go about your week, 
and money comes in, and I recognize that for some of us, we've seen our income dip. Acknowledge that. But don't forget, God gave first. And so therefore, out of gladness, we should give. Love you, church. All right, let's go ahead and sing one more song as we get ready for our uh, closing prayer here. <clears throat> ready? All right. Don't you want to go to that land? Oh, don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Oh, where I bound, where I bound. Don't you want to go to that land? Oh, don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Oh, where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Nothing but love in that land. Oh, it's nothing but love in that land. Nothing but love in that land. Oh, where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Nothing but love in that land. No, it's nothing but love in that land. Nothing but love in that land. Oh, where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Nothing but joy in that land. No, it's nothing but joy in that land. Nothing but joy in that land. Oh, where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Nothing but joy in that land. No, nothing but joy in that land. Nothing but joy in that land. Oh, where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Nothing but peace in that land. No, it's nothing but peace in that land. Nothing but peace in that land. Oh, where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Nothing but peace in that land. No, it's nothing but peace in that land. Nothing but Peace in that land, oh, where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Well, I've got a Savior in that land, oh, I've got a Savior in that land. I've got a Savior in that land, oh, where I'm bound, where I'm bound. I've got a Savior in that land, oh, I've got a Savior in that land. I've got a Savior in that land, oh, where I'm bound. Where I'm bound. So don't you want to go to that land, oh, don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land, oh, where I'm bound? Uh, don't you want to go to that land, oh, don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land, oh, where I'm bound, where I'm bound? Whoa, I didn't know we were going to hold that out there, and then y'all just took it, so I was like, whoa. Church, I'd like to thank you once again for joining with us today as far as worship. Uh, i got a few notes uh, from folks. I'd like to start off with uh, something Dustin mentioned in his lesson, just the, the weary world and just the fact that we have hope as Christians in light of whatever goes on. Um, I did get a text from Deb Capper uh, that mentioned uh, Jim, and we want to be in prayer for him because Jim has decided to give up deer hunting uh, because he is no longer physically able to do so. So if you know Jim at all, you know that's like cutting a part of him away. So it's a very hard decision, I'm sure, for him. So we want to make sure we keep him in our prayers. Um, I'm going to throw Deb on there as well. Uh, Deb taking care of Jim, and uh, she has her own health issues going on, and she continues to battle with uh, workers' comp and all the stuff that goes along with that. So uh, we want to keep Deb in our prayers. And then... I got a text from Connie Faust, and I'm just going to read uh, what she, she wrote here. Uh, she's uh, requesting forgiveness from God and people uh, from my past and present. 
I can be annoying, abrasive, critical, and neglectful to help as I can. It may be fear and lack of faith. Please pray for and give grace for my faults. Connie has such a big heart, and I love her. Actually, I love her for some of the things that she mentioned as being bad things. Uh, sometimes Connie just just tells it how it is, and I appreciate that so much about her. Uh, but definitely keep her in our prayers. So church, let's go together as, as we pray now. Holy Father, as we come before you, we thank you for this chilly day that you've given us to uh, be together. Uh, we are grateful for those that have joined us online, and we, we pray that you be with them as well. Father, we pray for uh, the world in which we live. There are many things that are going on that would tend to drag us down, and uh, we have become weary of but Father, in light of all that, we pray as Christians that we portray the, the hope uh, that we have in you, that we carry that with us, and that, Father, we are able to maybe uh, lighten things for others and be able to show them the light that we have within us. Father, we pray for Jim at this time in his decision and his health issues that he's experiencing. We, Father, we just pray that your peace would be upon him in, in the times that he is having, allow him to have rest and allow him to get uh, um, the, the help that, at, that he would need to get beyond these times. Father, we pray that you be with Deb as she continues to take care of him and watch over him in light of her issues that she's having. And we pray, Father, that you just be at work in their lives. Uh, we ask that you be with Connie at this time in terms of her asking for forgiveness father we are grateful that she is part of our family here and we are grateful for her heart and her spirit and we just ask that you would be with her and lay your hand upon her and know that in you there is always forgiveness father we are grateful for us being together as a church and we pray father as we go through this week that you might utilize us as best as you can to further the work and to father show your son to those around us and it's in his name we pray amen have a great week church